Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Talk Anything. My name is Mr. John, and today we have a special guest co-host, Cassie. <laughs> yeah, and today together we're going to be interviewing a cybernetic wolf. Welcome to our podcast. Hello. Well, on Talk Anything, we like to talk to people about topics that they are interested in, whatever they may be. And what is the topic today that you would like to talk with us about? Scientology. <laughs> oh man! No, no, oh, we've been very. I expected that one. Yeah. Run away! <laughs> Maybe someday I'll talk on that topic. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like the idea of talk on anything, but I do not have the expertise to talk on that. <laughs> no, probably, <laughs> probably not. I don't either. Which is part of the reason why I'd be interested in talking about it. Anyways, so Wolf, today we're going to be talking to you about furries, right? What that means. Well, furries, uh, the definition goes different from different furry to furry. But the generally accepted term is somebody that enjoys anthropomorphized animals. You said it varies from person to person. How, do you, how would you define it for yourself? I I pretty much just said my definition. Oh, okay. Well, cool. So, what are some of the the varieties of furry that you think that w- would be something that you would get in the furry culture, or the anthropomorphized? I I I <laughs> I hope that this thing furry is okay because I, I I don't know if I can say that as a word. You you can shorten it to anthro. That's fine. Anthro. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> I'll have to practice that for a bit. <laughs> so, is it from your perspective? Is it better to just refer to the culture as furries or anthro, or what's the best way to refer to people in what I heretofore have known as furries? Well, I use furries and anthros as interchangeably, but yeah. some people would argue that scalies would not be furries. Oh, but. I would consider the furry term with a lowercase f as all anthro animals. Whereas okay. furries with a capital F are furries with fur. Okay. Mm, mm. That makes a lot of sense. So if going forward, if you think it's all right, I'll, I'll continue to refer um, the whole culture as furry. If you think that's uh, politically correct. Yeah, that seems all right. So anyways, a little aside there. I forgot what your question was, Cassie. I don't remember what it was either. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> it was about the subcultures of furries and what all categories right. there are. Yes. So I'll say it again. So what is um, what would you consider part of the culture of furries? Because I know that's a really relatively huge category. So for you, what would that include? I know you talked about like scalies, and I don't like understand what that means. So, if you'd like to also explain that, that'd be awesome. Uh, scalies are just furries that have scales or skin. Uh, mm. The furries that have skin would be like dolphins and sharks. Mm-hmm. So, are there any other like categories of like furries that you like rub against a lot, or is that just kind of you? Um... Yeah, does my question make any sense? <laughs> Uh, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, it's right. all good. Bas- basically, what what are some of the different groups or subcultures that you know of in furries? Well, um, there's there's the convention goers. I know that. Um, there's the fur suiters. There's artists and writers and a whole bunch of a whole array of things. Uh, basically, we're furries are just humans, but with fur. Mm-hmm. I gotcha. And, well, and it sounds like sometimes it's not that they wear fur, but more they like to draw fur. Or humans with fur. Or they like to go to events about... Um, humans and you said conven- Yeah, you said convention goers. Um, could you explain that a little bit more? 
I've not been to a convention, but I do know that some furries have post-convention depression. Hmm. Oh. What do you think that's about? Uh, post post-convention depression is when you get sad that you don't have any real life furries around you mm. anymore. Sense. So it's kind of like you go to this convention and you be able, and you're able to be with all these people that you can really kind of um, be authentic around, and then when you go home from the convention, it's kind of like, well, I don't really have any friends that are like this, so now what do I do with you know the part of me that is a furry? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that makes sense. That would be really hard. That actually makes me think of the. I know, especially in in the school system, there can be a lot of well prejudice, discrimination against people who are furries, or even insults against people who aren't furries using furry as an insult. I guess, what's your perspective or experience with that? If you're willing to share. Well, uh, I actually got out of high school before I became a furry. Okay. <laughs> you skipped a lot of the drama. That's good. <laughs> I was exposed to furries in high school, but I I was just like, eh. So that actually brings up a question I really had was if being furry is something that you feel is a kind of a lifelong internal part of you, or if it's something that develops, or if it's you know genetic or inherited, or What's your opinion of where furriness comes from? Well, it's a lot like it's a it's a lot like a hobby. If you're introduced to it and you enjoy it, you join it. If you're introduced to it and you don't like it, you don't join it. it makes a lot of sense. It sounds definitely like um sounds in a different category than something like a gender preference or a ethnic group. But more of a um, uh, help me out here. You can kind of dabble in and out. You can dabble in and out of it as you see fit. Is that kind of how it is? Sorry, I'm having a fit of coughs over here and muting my mic. <laughs> so right, we can wait. <laughs> You're good. Uh, what was your questions again? So is it um, more like something that you can dabble in and out of as you see fit, um, which is less than I mean, which is different from like. Uh, as John was saying, the um, just a sexual form of like gender or things like that, um, which is more uh, static in a way. Uh, being a furry is definitely a choice, uh, according to me. Uh, some furries may think that it's not a choice, but I I just don't know about that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. There might be others who have a different opinion on choice or not, but at least for your experience, it certainly was something that you chose out of personal interest in it. Yes, it it was a personal choice for me. Um, now, for the furries that may not decide that it is a choice, they may be actually other kin, which um, they believe that they are their fursana or their animal of choice. Okay, and you said that term is other kin? Yes. Okay. So, with other kin, it sounds like that's, uh, well, I guess you could say another one of those subcultures, or I don't know if it even counts as a subculture, but another group of people who are furry. Uh, most other kin would be offended if you called them a furry. Oh, okay. Well, that's actually really good to know. Maybe someday we'll have to find another kin to interview on here. So is that more just because um, furry, in a way, is? I mean, I, I don't expect you to t- talk for you know what isn't your experience. But if you have any insight on this, I would like to to hear it from you. Is just that so the furry community is more of a just um. A transient thing, and, and then the other kin would think of, um, you know, if you were trying to put them in that category, it would be quite insulting because they don't they see it as their identity and not 
not something that you just dabble in. I believe that would be correct. Uh, furries, you can join <laughs> in and leave anytime you want. And you can change whatever animal or being you want to be. However, with other kin, I do believe that they have a set specific creature or character in mind when talking about themselves. Mm, okay, that makes sense. So, well, I guess not to get too distracted into this other um, group, kind of going back to your idea of being a furry, what are some of the things, like, you met someone who's never heard of furries, you know, I've talked with you before about this, but what would you want people to know? Um, like, what it's like, what you like about it, things like that. Sorry, coughing fits. <laughs> it's all right, I think. <laughs> figured it'd give you a minute. <laughs> um, just what are some of the things you like about furry culture? I I tend to like the community around, around the furries. Uh, they're rather accepting, except for when it comes to... Um, Child-loving people, as we shall family-friendly put it. Okay. Pedophilia is essentially what you're talking about, I assume. Yes. Okay. So, you say accepting of people other than that. So, what ways are they accepting? In the furry community, they don't care if you're left or right wing. They don't care if you're authoritarian. Authoritari- yes. Authoritarian. Author- <laughs> authoritarian. authoritarian or libertarian mm-hmm. they don't care if you're rich or poor they don't really care about a lot of anything except for being a furry that actually sounds like that could be a very pleasant group to be part of and you said you haven't been to conventions so how do you interact with the furry community I usually interact with them by commissioning artists and doing role play. So tell I'm curious about your role play. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Like what do you, what do you do with that? Well, it's like choose your own adventure, but you get to be part of it. Mhm. So in a way I th- am thinking of uh LARPing. Yes, you know live action role play where you can where you can, you mm-hmm. know, live action role play. Right. <laughs> so is that is that kind of, you know, exactly what it, what it is? Or? Yeah, it's like LARPing, but for furries. Mm-hmm. So it's just the different um, category of thing that you're focusing on. Right. It's usually over text, but sometimes we can do it over voice. Uh, I don't like to do it over voice because it gets weird Uh, I guess if you don't Mm. mind me asking what are some ways it gets weird and you can always just say skip if you're not comfortable answering that question um, I don't know if I want to answer that one (laughs) okay hey no that's fair (laughs) totally um, understandable (laughs) Well, you engage with other furries through these role plays and through text how do you find them in the first place? How do you get in touch with the roleplay community? Uh, usually through forums like Reddit or, well, Reddit. Hey, Reddit's a big one. Uh, there's also Fur Affinity and uh, DeviantArt. Okay. DeviantArt I have definitely heard of. Um, is, that a, is that a really popular place for uh, furries? to post or their art or have discussions or things? It, it's relatively relatively popular, but it's a bit more popular to post on Fur Affinity. Uh, there's also Ink Bunny, but uh, that's for adults, and I would not suggest you go there unless you're looking for it. Gotcha. That's awesome. Yeah, that'll be really helpful to just have some places to go if in- people are interested in um, participating in that kind of role play thing to be able to have those resources. So thank you for telling about those. One thing I, I do want to ask you about is um, now in conversations I've had with you in the past, you have mentioned what you call the patho- pathology. 
I'm going to say this wrong, pathogen. Um, can you explain what that is? Pathogen. Pathogen. Okay, could you explain what the pathogen is? It, it's basically just the spread of what I would like to call furriness. Yeah, and how how does that work? How does it spread? Or how do people get introduced or come into it? Uh, usually it's just by meeting another furry or interacting with furry art or uh, furry text, uh, such as writing or something. The most common pathogen is anamorphs. Okay. Um, was that, wasn't that like a, a juvenile book series? Or am I getting this wrong? Yes, that's that's right. Uh, another one is Disney's Robin Hood, and the latest and greatest is Zootopia. <laughs> oh, so Zootopia has been kind of a um, carrier for this pathogen. It sounds like. Yeah, that's that's right. So, for you, again, if this is an all right question to ask, how what got you first interested in furry? Well, a friend of mine was doing some art at in high school, and I'm like, oh, those are some cool uh, things. What are they? And he, he just goes, oh, they're, they're just animals that look like people. I just draw them for fun. Oh, wow. So you liked his art, and then I, where did it go from there? Well, I looked up furries on the internet, and uh, I, I was met with adult content. Okay, so that that's... I'm sure it's not what you were what you were hoping to find, <laughs> or maybe the other way around, or maybe it was. <laughs> so okay, you found adult content, and then you're like, "What? Dang, I like this!" Or I plead the fifth. Oh, you plead the fifth. Okay. Now, I have seen that you have a, or at least part of, a fursuit. Could you tell me, or tell our audience, since I already know, what is a fursona? Well, as I explained earlier, there's um, furries that have chosen characters or animals. Those yeah. specific chosen characters or animals are called fursonas. Which can be wolves, dragons, horses, or any mix of any animal. Some animals are even just straight up aliens, such as a sergal. S S E R G A L. What is that? Okay. What is it? Well, look like? if it's all right, if I can send you an image, I can send you one of mine. Sure. Hey, you know what? You can do that, and if my editing skills have any engagement whatsoever, then maybe I can include that into the um, video. But if not, whoever's listening, um, <laughs> maybe there will be a video. Maybe there won't. Yeah, we can always add. We can always add a link to it. That would be cool. Yeah, so maybe there'll be a link to it in the bottom thing. Yeah, if you could send it to us, and we can we can talk about it for a second. Okay, well, um, here, let me pull mine up. Ooh. Now, this character I made on a base, which is pre-made art, and I filled in the colors for it. Now, you said this is an alien-based um, life form? Yes. Is there any, any other background to it than that, or is yes. it just kind of whatever the person role-playing chooses? Oh, there's a whole lore behind it. Uh, they are, they're quite extensive in their lore. Do you want to, like, get into that, I mean, get into that for a second and just kind of tell us a little bit about it? I'm fascinated. I will be sending you a link. Sounds good. Now, as far as yourself, you don't consider yourself a Sergal. What is you, your, um, persona? Unless you are a Sergal. <laughs> no. Um, uh, I... I'm a human, thank you, but my character is a black cybernetic wolf, or a cyborg wolf. And if you're interested in sharing your 
um, character with anyone else, you're welcome to post a picture of, of your character as well, and we'll we can add <laughs> that. But that's up to you. Yeah, I would love that. So, question for you then. So, does that mean that I know we spoke about this a little bit earlier, but um, I know this is you know your personal experience, and you can't talk to every, for everyone. But um, w- is it pretty common to go up to like a, a furry and just ask like, what is your persona like, or what do you like to dress up as? Which would be kind of your is that what your persona would be in that context or Are you asking like the appropriate ways to to ask, or if it's appropriate to ask someone what their persona is? Yeah, in a way. All right. So most furries that are out in the open, as in not closeted, will um, not have any outward furriness to them. Um, I have I have a piece of clothing called a collar, and I wear that around. Mm-hmm. So that what so it outs me as a furry. If if you know that you are, if you're a furry, you would know the subtext behind it. But most people think it's just a nice looking necklace. Sure. Okay, so you have ways for other furries to recognize you as furry that wouldn't necessarily um, expose yourself to people who are not part of that culture. That's correct. It it's more it's more or less subterfuge. Yeah. But a way to be able to be authentic while not allowing those who would ask weird questions to, to know. And I've heard of other groups doing things like this. Um, if you're comfortable. What are some other ways that you might show or that um a furry might show that they are in that category. In the uh which category? Just that they they are that they're a furry. Well, uh, they might introduce you as an animal lover, though that could mm-hmm. be just somebody that loves animals. Almost sounds like an introduction that would be yeah, leaving okay. things open for more questions. Like Hey, I'm an animal lover, and then if you're curious if they're furry, you might ask more of like, "Oh, in what ways?" I don't know. Yeah, that that sounds about right. Like, what's your favorite animal and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So there's the collar, and then there's also the um, saying that. Is there is there like another example of that? Uh, some people wear cat ears. Mm-hmm. I'm not particularly a fan of that. Why not? Well, because that you could be a furry or you could be a Nico. Oh wow! I didn't. Uh, I guess I know this isn't your group, but could you quickly explain what a Nico is? Nico is just another word for cat boy or cat girl. Gotcha. I assume that's based off of the Japanese word Neko, which means cat. Yes. So, I mean, a bit ago, I outright asked you, hey, what's your fursana? Um, Is that a rude question to ask someone who is a furry? No, that is not a a rude question. Okay, so if if I meet another furry on the streets and I ask them, hey, what's your fursana? How How would you expect that they would take that question? A little bit of trepidation because um, most people don't like to um, be outed. Right. Okay. So it's something to something to take with care. Yes, if you are meeting a furry in a convention of some sort, and they have a badge on with an animal on them with a little name underneath that or above the animal. Then you can be like, hey, I see you've got this badge. What's that about? And they're like, oh, well, I'm furry. And we're like, okay, well, what's your fursana? That would be appropriate. Right. The more, just allow them to have uh, more control over the conversation instead of jumping right into something that may be fascinating, but it also is something that is more personal to the person. Yes. That makes sense. So, 
it's one of those things that, um, well, like for for me in my conversations with you, at least texting online and such, you have told me about your first persona, and you've, um, and if I understand right, you you're proud of it. It's something that you think is fun, and you want to share it. it but it sounds like that can be mixed with other people. Right, because uh, most par some parents, and I'm uh, not most, but some, some parents will shun this part of their child or um, roommate or some part, and uh, they may have consequences that can't be seen from an outside view. Oh, okay. So essentially, it sounds like sharing your persona is something you want to conceal if the person you're sharing with it sharing it with it's un if it's uncertain whether they are safe or going to respect you but it, if you're in a situation where you know that person is likely to treat you with respect and equality is that a situation where generally people would want to share their persona I would say so, yeah. If you were, like, at a literal furry convention, then, yeah, it, it's, right. <laughs> everybody's there knows you're a furry or furry adjacent. So if you're going to ask someone about their furriness, you don't do that in front of other people, it sounds like. Yeah, you don't go up to a random cashier and be like, hey, what's your fursana? Fair enough. Like, Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, it almost sounds like the rule is do not out others until, like, unless they, you know, allow them to be the leader of the conversation. Yeah, I, I hate to say it, but it's like the don't ask, don't tell policy. <laughs> sure. Well, <laughs> except, except for me, I really like to tell. So please do ask. So it's. Oh, good. Maybe less. Because I was. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, John. Oh, I was going to say it's less of a don't ask, don't tell, but don't ask unless we tell. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> that makes sense. So, yeah, well, if you'd like, unless we have more on the subject, I would love to know more about your persona. I'm very curious about you sent this picture, and I'm very curious about like how you connect with it. And. Um, if you've had more for, uh, personas than just this one, or if this is just the one that you like the most, or um, just things like that. If you'd love to tell, I'd love to listen. All right. Well, the, my persona is an OC, or an original character. Uh, he started off as just a black wolf, and then he got clothes, mm -hmm. and then he got his wings. And those are some epic wings. I gotta say. Thank you. <laughs> uh, most of this has transpired through role play and then moved on into art. Mm -hmm. So these wings are rather old, but the art is newer than the concept of the wings. Right, right. That makes sense. So when did you create this uh, persona? I mean, it sounds like it's very much been a work in progress, but... Um, like, when would you say that it was something that you created? I would say I created a little bit after I graduated high school. That's awesome. So what does this character mean to you? Like, do you connect? Like, I've, I've done some role play um, in the past, but, and like, sometimes, you know, you get connected with your character and there's, per, there's parts of the character that, you know, really reflect who you are, or who you want to be. What what does this character mean to you? Uh, can I ask a, a question in return? Go for it. Have you played Dungeons and Dragons? Yep. Me and John have played that before, so yes. Okay. Now imagine this being my level one character, probably a bard. Now, mm -hmm. at this current level, he's level 20. Imagine, imagine <laughs> how much interaction I've had with this character. Right, this right. I mean, time. in a way, it's taken on a second life. <laughs> you know, I've never taken a D&D &D game all the way to level 20. Sounds like you have developed this character for a long time. 
Yes, it, whereas my Sergal up here is probably a level two. So is that Sergal one that you also roleplay as? I have yet to roleplay as him. With a yet there, it sounds almost like you have plans to, but just haven't yet. Correct. Well, that's interesting. Um, I hadn't thought to consider this, but how common is it for furries to have multiple personas? Um, most people just have one or two. There are a few that have five or six. I am one of them. Mm-hmm. And there are some people that have one or two hundred personas. Oh, wow. That's a lot. I wonder how they keep like track of all of them. Well, I keep track of mine through Toy House, which Ooh. is this a a website? Yes. Is this? I mean, so you 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 do you kind of take notes on like this character has like wings now, or like like how do you keep track of your characters? Well, with Wolforian, I have him. Um, tracked all up in my head because that's how um and just to clarify wolforian is this wolf with a cybernetic uh the cybernetic wolf with the wings um that the picture will be attached yeah right so it's um i mean so it's very much part of you now i mean especially having this many years you know with this character like I'm, i'm very curious about the personality of this character if you'd be willing to share well, um, he he's a faring creature, so he's more jovial and a bit more happier than I am. But mm-hmm. he he's evolved quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, with the depth, do what? The depth of character as well. So I was you've been able to play with him more. I'm sure. Yeah. Quick question too is you say he's evolved quite a bit, um. Has that evolution been part of your own life and your own changing? Like, as you change as a person, does your character change to reflect that? Or are they more separated? If we were to make Ophorian a person, it would be a clone of me. Mm -hmm. Except he would be, you know, spacefaring and, you know, more cool. As it were. <laughs> More cool than you. Come on, Wolf. Is that even possible? <laughs> okay, so it definitely sounds like his personality has evolved as your own has. My question, I guess, then would be, is that a two-way street? Does him evolving change you as well as you evol- you changing change him? Uh, I would say that his development has helped me understand people in different ways, and that would have changed my view on a few topics in life. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I would say so. Right. So I did I did writing role play um, as a kid, and I just uh, found a group and and just started you know writing stories together. So one of my characters was uh, Natalie. And she was kind of an elf. An elf. And so it, it sounds very similar to what you described, although I didn't get into it nearly as much as, you know, it sounds like you have. I think she, I would still classify her as like a level two. She's very underdeveloped. But in a way, like, I identify with her characteristics. It's It was really an escape for me to be able to kind of see myself as her when I was young. Um, just kind of imagining, like, you know, what would she do in this situation um, and things like that. Is that kind of how you felt about your character? Or? Yeah, I would say so. That that would be my that that would be Wolforian, the black wolf you've seen. You've seen um, with other characters. Right. I would have to go into a different headspace in order to role play as them because they have a different personality it almost sounds like wolforian is you and then you have these other characters that are that may still be parts of you or ways you like to express yourself but 
almost like he is a core part of you and these others are um or expressions just either for fun or to express different things that you want to try out yeah it's it's very common in the furry community to say that your oc is you and your other personas are fragments of your personality mm. oh okay that's that, really cool that's fascinating and that's a much better way of wording it than I did. <laughs> <laughs> I find it fascinating to learn directly from someone who knows and cares about and who experiences. In fact, I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent here, is that um, you were saying earlier that role-playing as Wolforian has actually helped you see things kind of in a different light and kind of has helped shape some of your views. And I feel like times like this, like an interview where you can where we can talk to someone who has a different experience, different things that they care about, different worldview, you're a furry. And there's different things about what you experience in the world. And I feel that that's extremely important to be able to have a chance to learn other people's experiences and start understanding humanity in a much broader scope than just to her own personal experience. So mm-hmm. there's my there's my tangent kind of moral message to this. <laughs> Wolf, is there is there anything else that that you would like us to know about furry? All right, you recall back to when I said we accept everyone except for the pedos? Yes. Mm-hmm. We also do not really enjoy zoophiles either. What are those? Um, Is that more the sexual um, application of a furry? No. That would be the sexualization of an actual real-life animal. Uh, we, We do not condone that. Okay. So you do not condone... You don't rape animals, you don't rape kids, but if you have sexual preferences that don't violate others or animal rights. Um, that's your own choice, your own business. Yeah, that, that's about it. That's good to know. And I'm, in fact, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm sure there's some people out there who think furries are zoophiles. And it sounds like, as a general rule in that community, that's exactly the opposite. I don't know. It sounds really like, especially if you were in this thing, like it sounds really, it sounds like it would be really like relieving. Like you'd have a community around, like that sounds really like it's really accepting, you know, of what you are. And I think that's, that's, that's what a lot of people need, um, especially these days is just to have a place that they feel safe. And so um, this can be the place for them. And, I know you've talked about some ways that you can connect, like with some of the sites that you use to connect with um, other furries doing role plays. Um, what other resources would you say that there are for people who maybe want to look into this or uh, get into it or, or just have? Yes, I do have a link to uh, research uh, that you can look at, uh, look at the research findings. I will add that if there is any um, any links, any sites, resources, images, anything like that you would like to share, I'll add it in there. All right. Mm-hmm. What is it that you wish like people understood about furries that we have not talked about yet? Most people think that furries is a sexual deviancy, but it's not. It's a hobby. Uh, you wouldn't blame a woodworker for making a dildo and blaming the whole woodworking industry for becoming sexual. You would mm-hmm. just say, hey, that one guy made a dildo, isn't he weird? You wouldn't say, hey, right. hey all the woodworkers are weird. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. So just being able to be no more that, um, you know, not everybody's the same and and that um even though i feel, honestly <laughs> like i i feel like before doing some research on this you know i'm kind of showing my my 
lack of knowing about this this topic, which is why part of the reason why I was so fascinated to talk to you about it is just that that's kind of where I, where I thought you know it was. But then seeing more about you know just the furry community, there's like just so much variety, and I'm sure it gets really, really, really annoying for you and others when it's like. No, there is so much more about my community. Like, stop talking to me about, like, that particular, like, aspect of it. That's just an aspect. And there's, like, thousands of more interesting things that we could talk about. Yeah. I mean, there is sexual sides of it. Mm -hmm. You You can be sexual in the furry fandom, or you can be just the um, non-sexual, non-sexual side of it. So, um... What other advice would you give to someone who is unsure of how to interact with people who are furries? I would say that you just don't treat it like it's a sexual thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's right. a hobby. For some people, they want to talk about their adventures in role play. Some people want to talk about their favorite animal and how they want to be there. And uh, some people want to talk about how their... Um, Art. Some people want to talk about their writing. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I'm willing to discuss almost anything. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad because lots to talk about here. It might be even just fun to like have you back on just to like go over more questions. If we have more that we want to talk about this, maybe it would be a good idea to come back. Continuing from here, what would you think of doing a second um, interview at some later point? Sure. Okay, cool. I just want to say to uh, you, Wolf, like I just, I'm, I'm very grateful that you were willing to come on here and be our guinea pig. And also, I, I've learned a lot from talking to you, and I'm really grateful that you were willing to come and talk and um, be as open as you were. And, and thank you for your time. You're welcome. Well, and I will say also ditto to that, but also to you, Cassie. It's like. <laughs> Hey, thanks. <laughs> so having a co-host makes things a lot easier. That way, when you don't have know what to say next, I can I can fill in the holes or the vice versa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's nice to have two interviewers, and hopefully, you will participate in more interviews as we go along. I am in this for the long run, John. So oh, are don't you? Don't kick me out yet. Don't oh, kick man. me out yet. Well, <laughs> I don't want to overcommit you, so. I'm still new at this, still deciding what I want to do. Um, I should say, just kind of a bit of my thoughts about how I want to do this channel. Um, I kind of want a mix. Um, I love this idea of doing interviews of people of whatever their pet topic is. I don't really care what it is, as, um, well, as long as it's um, something that's you know safe for a general audience. But if it's not, I might make a secondary channel for things that don't fit in that category. But anyways, um, other than that, though, I also kind of want to be able to just have videos that are just like, hey, here's an idea, here's a topic, and just a straight out monologue type thing. Um, I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that myself. I have a lot of ideas I'd like to share, but, um, you know, actually saying them and recording them and actually liking what I said enough to keep it, uh, that's a question mark. But that might be something also I'd be willing to have like others um like if you've got a specific thing where you're just like hey i want a video where i'm just saying my bit about something that i think is cool and i don't know yet what i'm gonna do i expect to make some short videos some long videos some well whatever we'll see as we go along this is brand new it has more chance of going nowhere than it has of going anywhere don't give up on it yet, John. <laughs> I'm not giving up on it. I'm just saying that it's fun to do whether or not it becomes a thing. Sure. And heck, if it just becomes a thing where we get on and we start chatting and record it, that's cool by me too. Uh, it's just a fun outlet, a fun thing to try. And hey, next time I get on, I will have a better microphone. Maybe this one's perfectly fine, and I probably didn't need to buy another microphone, but I'm going to have one anyways. So, Wolf, it's been fun. Um, Thanks for being my 
first interview. If I actually get around to editing this, or if Lauren gets around to editing it, which is more likely, um, and posting it, then you'll be my first YouTube video. Woohoo! <laughs> and I guess to our audience, thanks for listening to the very first video episode, whatever, of Talk Anything. This was Wolf of uh, also I can, I can the help with cybernetic the wolf well. um, yeah. this, and We have Cassie here. Thanks again. Thank you for coming and joining in on this um, crazy adventure. I hope that you guys learned as much as I did and have a great rest of your day. Yeah, maybe we'll see you another time. Maybe there'll never be another video. We will see where we go. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.